Hi, this is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting live from warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny, sometimes Colorado. So I am back from a trip to Dubai, Poland, and uh, Switzerland. And then I was also in Wyoming and had dinner with Governor last night on a uh, matter connected to the woolly mammoths. So that was fun. And I haven't had time to do an AMA and haven't had time to, to really uh, connect with all you guys. And so I figured I'd make a roll-up video of a variety of different things that we're working on. Uh, and just take care of backlog of some questions that have come up uh, here and there about releases and other such things. So uh, first off, the trip throughout the Middle East, uh, the trip to Ukraine, excuse me, to Poland-Ukraine border and then uh, Switzerland, uh, two of the three were related to Cardano business. So in Switzerland, we met with the Cardano Foundation and we're deep in the weeds about governance and a litany of other topics. Uh, in, at a later date, we'll jointly make an announcement about open source stuff and so forth. Uh, so that's uh, chipping away. Uh, we're also having big discussions about consensus, uh, which is in uh, Austin, Texas, uh, June 9th to 12th. It's one of the biggest events in our industry. Tons of people show up. We're renting a large pavilion there, uh, and we're going to go along with many of the other members of the Cardano ecosystem and hopefully be able to showcase that Cardano is open for business. Uh, as many of you know, uh, a major, major, major hard fork combinator event is happening uh, in June, uh, which is the Vossel hard fork. Uh, and that is going to contain pipelining, which will be a massive performance improvement to Cardano, alongside the first wave of significant Plutus enhancements uh, since Plutus shipped in September. Uh, as with all development ecosystems uh, and languages, you need a little bit of time for developers to play around with it, build things, and then tell you what they don't like. So we've gotten a huge amount of feedback from both the Plutus Pioneers program, uh, people building things like uh, Cody, for example, with Jed, uh, and uh, a lot of people in the Cardano DeFi Alliance about things they liked and didn't like about Plutus. And then what we've been able to do is implement a litany of SIPs, SIP 31, 32, 33, and 40. A video is coming out talking about these Plutus-specific upgrades. Uh, John Woods, uh, the lead technical architect of Cardano, made the video. We kind of went into detail about all kinds of cool stuff that's coming. So this and pipelining are just a huge upgrade, and we think it's going to massively improve uh, the DeFi experience uh, for people building things. So uh, we're going to showcase a lot of that at consensus, and I think people are going to be very happy with it uh, from a lot of different dimensions. Uh, now, the Cardano DeFi ecosystem is growing pretty rapidly. Uh, last time I checked, it was in the hundreds, and now we're almost over a 1,000 uh, projects that are building. And the problem I have is that I don't actually get regularly briefed on all of these things. Uh, we're working so that I, I have better visibility. And one of the things I've been trying to do is uh, create some sort of mechanism where if you're building an interesting and cool project on Cardano, uh, that I can, or somebody like me, can interview you, uh, and then we can broadcast that through the IO channels. We care a lot about ecosystem development. And what we do as an organization is occasionally stand things up when there's a deficiency in the ecosystem. Uh, for example, uh, we said, hey, it would be really good to make sure that there's some dedicated VC vehicle that is investing in people building stuff on Cardano. And so uh, I and others came together. We created something called the C Fund. And now the C Fund, we are limited partners and the general partners are under an organization called Wave Financial, uh, go and invest in a lot of different ventures, uh, usually ones that uh, we ha have a lot of knowledge about and we've worked with. For example, Wing Riders was one because we've worked with that team for almost four years now, you know, from the ledger integration to other things. The problem is that uh, if we talk about the things that we're familiar with, we probably have an interest in those things. And there's now a huge ecosystem and lots of people. So I've been thinking a lot about how do you stay somewhat objective, fair, and impartial in this process and give people a platform to showcase what they're doing. Uh, so uh, consensus is an example. We're there and we're trying to get a lot of people there to come and set up booths and talk. And we're going to obviously host a Cardano-specific event at consensus. Uh, but if you guys have some ideas about ways content can be done, uh, we can certainly push that through. The challenge is that vetting organizations, people, processes, procedures 
is very hard. Uh, Sunday Swap is a phenomenal example of that. You know, we met the team and uh, we collaborated back and forth, and then you know things happened, and now there's this dispute between Card Starter and Sunday Swap. Uh, you know, we had a very tangential involvement there. It was in our interest to have core developers building things on Cardano because we're sitting from the perspective of well, Plutus needs to evolve. The dev experience of Cardano needs to evolve. Okay, so we need to regularly have channels of communication with stable coins and oracles and dexes and these other things. And they need to come to us and say, it's not working for us. And here's why. And here are features and functionality that we require. So it creates a close relationship and lots of back and forth communication. And then you say, okay, well, let's build up that ecosystem. And then things happen, uh, some great and some not so great. And then we're just left with egg on our face when the not so great stuff happens as if we were sitting in the boardroom making decisions. And so it's uh, the next phase of the Cardano project where things get complicated. It's very easy for everyone uh, to be friends and have great relationships when there's no money on the table. Everything is unified. There's a common set of goals. But when competition comes into play, and you have 10 DEXs fighting each other or 10 stable coins fighting each other, uh, that competition suddenly creates a lot of animosity and friction. Uh, for example, we as an organization through CFUN have a position in Cody and a position in Wing Riders. Both of them are competing in the stable coin market. Uh, Wing Riders, I believe, is using Milkomata and they, they, they have, I think, some stable coins they're bringing in. They announced that today, so I tweeted it because it's pretty exciting. But Cody is doing JET. So they're different types of coins. Uh, one's a wrapped asset, the other's algorithmic, but they serve the same purpose. And so within our own portfolio, there's things there. And those are just two examples. There's dozens and dozens that are going to come. So this is tricky, and it's challenging, and it's it's something that every ecosystem kind of grows into, and it's why actually governance is so incredibly important, and it's the thing we've been talking about the most right now with the foundation and other actors of how do you stand up things that are clearly objective, and, and how do you actually build things the right way? Uh, wallets are another example of that. So for example, uh, there's all these community wallets or third-party wallets that are starting to support Cardano. And so this question comes out of what is an official wallet for Cardano? Air quotes, official. So the core entities that, that bootstrap the ecosystem, like Emergo has Heroi, and we created Daedalus, uh, now there's NAMI and CC and there's Ada Light and all these things floating around. There's probably more than a dozen wallets. Uh, and the foundation sits in the middle of all that, and they have to kind of somehow figure out, do we endorse, do we not endorse? How do these pieces fit together? Um, so one of the things I recommended is saying, well, have self-certification, create a checklist and say, if you can do all these things and demonstrate a certain level of quality, whoever does that, uh, then that becomes a certified wallet. And then it gets equal standing in the marketing for wallets that people can use, recommended wallets. Seems pretty reasonable, but it's enormous work product in principle, uh, in practice to do. Uh, and, uh, just smart contract certification is an enormous work product. Uh, there's a, a bunch of our devs and third-party organizations coming together in Barcelona, Spain, May 17th and 18th, to sit down and discuss the certification levels for smart contracts, level one, level two, level three. This same working group could certainly have a deep and detailed conversation about accreditation certification of Cardano wallets. But then there's other infrastructure as well, like the interfaces to list Cardano, like the Cardano Rosetta and so forth. So this is kind of the, the terrible teens, the growing pains, the uncomfortable part of where Cardano is at. And every ecosystem goes through this and has to deal with this, whether it be Ethereum or Bitcoin, which are a little older, or the third gens, which are comparable in age to us. They have to kind of move beyond that founding set and now move into a much more diverse and an at times contradictory and conflicting ecosystem. As a founder, what I do try to do is, is try to provide generic general solutions that don't solve a surface problem, but actually resolve the root cause. 
So I, I look a lot for, you know, if we're going to market the ecosystem, how do you create a recurring e uh, standard where everybody's free to play there? I look a lot of what is required to bootstrap an ecosystem and how do you provide help? And in some cases, not provide help because it's too much help. Uh, so it's uh, it's an interesting question that we're going to be working our way through and it's going to become more poignant because things are moving so quickly. If you listen to crypto media, if you listen to the critics of Cardano, they seem to believe that Cardano doesn't exist. It's all just some elaborate super scam and, and nothing has been built and accomplished. If you're in the ecosystem, you're aware that not only is that false, it's blatantly false because there's so much going on. Over 4 million assets have been issued. There's tons of dApps under construction. New capabilities are turning on sometimes weekly with Cardano. And every time that happens, you gain something but you also introduce a new attack surface or complication to the protocol. Um, there's starting to be very significant contributions in the SIP process. I think SIP 50 is an example of that and uh, others that are having deep and detailed conversations about the parameterization of the system. D reps are turning on where we have delegated representatives and so forth. Uh, and so, uh, you know, these things happen. In addition, there've been, Already, community members working with each other to try to resolve problems. For example, MintSwap, very young team, and they seem to be moving very quickly, and they've done some interesting things, but there were some flaws in their code. Now, they tried as an organization to uh, do things the right way. They had a third-party auditor. In this case, it was Twig, uh, and Twig went through and found a lot of problems. They fixed those problems, but it turns out that there were things that were missed. Now, those things that were missed were not discovered by some nefarious hacker, but was actually discovered by another Cardano project who did the right thing and worked with the team, even though they were competitors, to help them get where they needed to go. So that's a beautiful thing uh, as a community and ecosystem, that people are working together, even when they're competitors, for the greater good of Cardano. And that's a, an attitude that ought to be preserved and maintained and uh, there's a lot of great innovation uh, from tokenomics innovation to launch innovation. And uh, each of these projects ought to be studied in their own right because they're doing things very differently. And it's really exciting. My problem as a CEO of IO is that I have finite time. And I really would love the luxury of being able to sit down and look at each and every project that's launching on Cardano and see what they're doing and how they're doing it. But if I do that, I don't have time to give you guys pipelining and input endorsers and all the Plutus enhancements, uh, the governance layers that need to come, the side chains ecosystem that needs to come. We are working on insanely aggressive timelines. Again, if you're outside of the Cardano space and you listen to the crypto media, they seem to think like one guy is like maybe copy pasting code from some Oracle. Uh, but the reality is there's hundreds of engineers working full time across more than a dozen organizations, some cases on the weekends, and they're standing up multiple shifts. And anywhere we have a deficit, we're bringing more people in, sometimes at enormous expense, so that we can maintain the Vossel hard fork timeline and the October hard fork timeline, because there's features and functionality that are absolutely required for commercial comparability. So this is our primary focus, I.O. The foundation has a different focus, and they're working equally hard Emergo has a different focus, and the other companies' ecosystem have a different focus, as do you, the DAP developers in the ecosystem. And everybody's trying very hard to just get an enormous amount done as quickly as they can. The problem is when you're moving that quickly, things do fall through. And one of those is being able to devote time and space to give people equal attention. So it's just a, something I figured I'd, I'd mention and uh, put out there, because we're now in that friction era, and uh, if people don't get the love, kindness, focus that they think they deserve, uh, they go to Twitter and complain or Reddit and complain and uh, so forth. Uh, and I, that's fair. I understand. You know, you're you're invested. You you've put time and effort. I was there. You know, I remember being here in the early days of the Bitcoin ecosystem, and there were a lot of things that I wanted to see with Bitcoin, and I didn't think the core developers really cared at all about outside opinions. And so that's why. I went to the altcoin space because we could innovate there and talk about stable coins and DEXs and smart contracts and these things. Um, we tried to innovate as much as we can. We have NEPA POWs in that. No one seems to care about that. Never got integrated into Bitcoin. Uh, Blockstream, when it came out, 
You know, they claim side chains would be here in just a little bit. That was 2014. And we don't really have a great layer two ecosystem yet in Bitcoin. Uh, so I was frustrated. I'm sure they're frustrated. Uh, we never got tender love, kindness, and care. Uh, and that's not an excuse, but it's just reality that people get busy and, you know, things happen. So uh, that's the story there. Um, now, moving to the second half of the year, you know, we're going to keep doing the 360. We're going to keep doing the blog posts, a um, lot of work on documentation. On my part, I'd really like to see an aggressive push to enhance the Plutus Pioneers program. There's certainly a lot of very interesting things that can be done there, uh, especially after the Volsal hard fork, because the design patterns and canonical way of building a Cardano application is going to change a lot. Uh, so to us, it's very important that we keep the pedagogy in sync with the innovation of the language. Uh, so Lars is certainly going to refresh that. And we've also been having some deep and detailed conversations about learning platform partnerships. We're going to go to a great learning conference here in May in London that has over 10,000 attendees and talk about building some permanent relationships with people that do MOOCs. Uh, we've also have been having deep discussions about what a mastering Cardano would look like. And I've been sampling a lot of the different books like Bitcoin scripting from Jimmy Song and Durantanathanopoulos' latest book on Bitcoin Lightning, the Mastering Bitcoin and Mastering Ethereum. We have a pretty good table of contents of topic areas we'd like to cover. And now we're getting the nitty gritty of what to explain. One of the problems for us is Cardano is an unstable protocol from the perspective of protocol being innovated rapidly. So if we were to write the Mastering Cardano book as of 2020, it would not include the peer-to-peer -peer gossip design. It would not include Genesis. It would not include a lot of the extended UTXO and Plutus stuff. It would not include native assets, all these things, because it was just the Shelley era. Now, in just a year's time, you see this enormous flourishing ecosystem, and a lot of stuff is happening. So there's a point of, well, when are things stable enough that you can write about something, and what you've written stays current and fresh, even if six months a year later? I'd say that inflection point is likely going to be October, where there's enough protocol stability, where things are, are for the most part, pretty stable from big concepts like extended UTXO and the canonical Plutus development experience, a lot of the consensus concepts are going to not change very rapidly thereafter. After Genesis, um, the Omega agenda is going to take several years to work its way through because it's so vast in scope and scale and there's so many new capabilities. Uh, but that's certainly enough time for a second edition of a textbook. But that's coming. Um, there are also uh, a lot of things to discuss in tooling, for example, linters in code quality coverage, these types of things, uh, documentation um, and uh, standard library, standard development kit. And what we found is that's that's a collaborative process with the DeFi Alliance and others. And we'll see an enormous amount of progress in the next nine months, I think, I, at getting that to a very beautiful state, especially post-fossil uh, in that respect. So uh, that's kind of a roll up on those topics. Um, you know, uh, it's just extraordinary to see how fast things are moving and how much work is being put in. And the CEO technical updates channel I have on Slack, every week there's like tons of videos that come through of where are they at, everything from demos of Mithril to demos of Hydra to the Light Wallet project that we're working on that we'll be able to showcase here in a little bit to the DAP store that's connected to that, the DREPs and voting center, uh, new things like the rollout of partial delegation and proxy keys, uh, and trying to bundle that with things like multisig. It's extraordinary, and it's just a river, and it's endless. And if you take a week off, you just you have to spend an enormous amount of time just to catch up to stay with the, uh, with the river and the torrent. Uh, and so it's, um, it's exciting from that respect, and it's uh, a little exhausting from that respect. But what's really exciting is I see so much organic leadership from within our community where people are stepping up and grabbing the baton and the torches. So it's a very healthy community, and uh, if people invest in it, I think that they'll find um, that it's well worth the time and effort that they put in uh, and uh, still remains in my view, one of the friendliest and most open communities. It's a bit sad that there's such a radical disconnect uh, from the mainstream crypto media and a lot of the VCs in crypto and what Cardano has accomplished, but, you know, it's their loss. 
uh, we're here and we're getting it done and we're doing the right things and we're doing things faster than pretty much everybody else in the third generation. And we have a long, beautiful vision and a massive lead in protocol design. Uh, so it's just a question of execution speed. Uh, and if people are so caught up in the tired lies of the past about being slow to market or you know unable to deliver things or there's no ecosystem or we don't have smart contracts, all they're doing is hurting themselves, their investors who follow them, and uh, ultimately their credibility as thought leaders in the ecosystem. It's not our concern. Business is good and it's great. Uh, every time we open something up, transaction volume, TVL, all this stuff always goes up and it keeps growing. We're not losing people. We're gaining people at an alarmingly brisk pace. I uh, come to the second half of the year, a lot of things that matter to me, like RealFi, we also get to talk about. For example, Bermuda, I'll be going there in October and we're going to have a lovely uh, time showcasing microfinance. Uh, things that I talked about eight years ago in my TED talk are actually going to be real things now that actually are happening with real people. And that's just one example of thousands of things that are being done and innovated um, from identity to compliance innovations to legal innovations and the kinds of quality of conversations that we have. Honestly, Cardano is leading the space in science, in formal methods, in how to build an ecosystem and maintain an ecosystem. And also it has that Bitcoin-esque mentality of being a honey badger. Doesn't seem to care who hates it, why they hate it, or what's said about it. It just moves on and it just does its thing. And the community has that same degree of resilience. Uh, and it's starting to develop its own cohort of leaders and diversity of opinions. Uh, and that's ultimately for the better. So it's pretty impressive from that perspective. So overall, I am uh, pretty excited about that. And this is definitely our best year, I'd say. Uh, it's the hardest because there's so much going on concurrently and so many things that have to be done. But it is the best year in terms of growth uh, and the best year in terms of relationships and connections and connecting Cardano to broader aspirations, whether it be a world financial operating system, uh, ESG goals, the charity components, uh, you know, identity, economic identity in particular, and getting people the ability to have agency, whether they be a diaspora or they be in a conflict zone or they uh, they just simply be in a country that doesn't have good financial infrastructure, like Burundi, for example. Uh, and just seeing the progress of the partners, like, uh, for example, World Mobile. We met up with them in Dubai and we met with them in Zanzibar before that, just a few months later in Dubai, already getting their internet balloons up, building their towers. It's extraordinary to see what they're able to do. And we're, we're starting to talk about syndicating the technology. How do we move that to Burundi to get connectivity? Because 98% of the country is not connected. How do you use this to get temporary connectivity in conflict zones so that they can report human rights abuses or other such things? And these are the kinds of order two, order three, order four, derivative thinking that you get to do now that you have these base capabilities in the ecosystem. So I hope this roll-up was helpful to everybody. Sorry, it's taken me a little bit of time to circle back. As I mentioned, it's been pretty much a madhouse and uh, it's going to stay that way till consensus. And then hopefully I'm able to take a break for a week or two afterwards. <laughs> and then it's right back up on the horse, right back up on the saddle uh, to keep going and the mad rush to, uh, to October. So do look for the uh, things coming out. Uh, middle part of the month, we should have a beautiful video about Plutus in the mid-month update. Uh, then obviously 360 is running monthly. Uh, I'm going to try to do a lot more podcasting. I'm staging up a podcast with Tamara Hassan and our uh, president chief of staff. And uh, Tam and I are going to talk about not just crypto, but a variety of topics and interview people and so forth. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So that'll come in the coming months. And then obviously I'm going to transform my AMA format to a more formal format with a lot more production value. Uh, so I think we can get to the next level. I'll keep doing special events like the event I did last week with Snoop Dogg. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get more people. Uh, you know, it's it's cool because they reach out to us and they say, hey, you want to do something? So sure, sounds like a lot of fun. And it seems to bring up a lot of people into the ecosystem. And there's no shortage of um, celebrities, business leaders, or other people that want to do those types of things on Twitter. And they're uh, they're easy to do. You just find a time and 
you know, once you're there, you talk for 45 minutes and 100,000 people listen to it. It's pretty crazy. A uh, lot of events to go to as well. I'll probably go to Davos. That'll be interesting. I'll uh, see if I can run into Klaus Schwab and I'll say, you know, I, I really like to own stuff and uh, I don't think I'd be happy if I don't. Maybe you should stop saying that. Uh, maybe we do a little citizen journalism, ambush him a bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, probably go to Davos. I try to go every year for that. And uh, obviously there's consensus and there's a few other events this year I'll snake to and the team will go to. I unfortunately missed Bitcoin Miami because I was coming back from Europe Although I heard there's 35,000 people that attended it. And uh, it was a pretty madhousey of an event. And NFTs are still popular, apparently. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's all I got for you now. I'll uh, probably do an AMA this week as well. And uh, as I said, new formats are coming. New podcasting is uh, coming uh, downstairs. We're going to build the studio for that. And then I'll have my own version of Jamie and you know we'll get nice woodwork and all that other stuff. So it'll be a pretty nice place and I'll be able to bring guests in and talk to them and so forth. Uh, and at some point we'll do something cool with the lobster. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and crypto bison is uh, another thing that's on schedule as well. And hopefully we'll be able to talk about that soon and show you guys some demos and other things. So we really are firing on every cylinder, whether it be payments with Hydra or light wallet support with Mithril and all the things there, the voting tools and democracy with Catalyst, the sidechains agenda with Mamba and all the great things that are occurring uh, there for Ethereum interoperability. Um, the Comet is already out. DC Spark is killing it. They also released Flint certification stuff that's occurring. Uh, ecosystem development is being stood up and Tim Harrison is doing a phenomenal job there. Uh, a lot of work on the open source project and that'll be disclosed at a later date. Uh, a lot of big events for the community coming. And by the way, this is the first year that the Cardano Foundation is running the Cardano Summit. Big summit, hopefully. Uh, and they'll tell me at some point uh, when that is and where that is and uh, how to speak and what to do. So we're really looking forward to that. A lot of community summits as well. Uh, you know, we uh, the certification summit Barcelona, for example. But there's also discussions of dexes and all these other categories. And the second half of the year post fossil, we should see several flavors of Jed for algorithmic stablecoins, and that'll I think have a dramatic impact for TVL and uh, also the work we do with microfinance. So thanks for all listening, and I hope this was helpful for you guys. I do like making these videos for time to time.